Hey guys, it's me, Joe, and today we're going to be breaking down the 13-month series weapons. These things have been around since the very beginning of Tower of God, literally chapter 2 of the comic, episode 1 of the anime. And although we only really know about two of them at this point, there is some very interesting lore, not just about some of the other specific weapons, but also about the creation of these weapons, why they exist, their purpose, and a lot more. So today, we're going to be breaking them down and and yeah, hope you enjoy. Also, just a slight thing. I'm kind of tired. Uh, it's actually really late when I'm recording this. So uh, forgive me if I'm a little crazy in this video. A little uh, a little bonkers. So the 13 months were created by Ashul Edwaru, who is a master craftsman and blacksmith who is very trusted by Jihad. Now, we do know, based on some explanations that we get in the Floor of Death, that the 13-month series weapons are actually all part of a half of a key that is required to proceed past the 134th floor. So right off the bat, we're already getting into some crazy lore territory, but essentially the key that Jihad created to go up the tower, to continue up the tower where no one has been, like literally no one, can be, the half of that key can be created once you collect 13 of these weapons. The other half is from the Jihad Rings. Maybe I'll do a whole nother video about that and the Princes of the Red Light District. But yeah, the 13 months create half of this key. Now what's really interesting about this is that Jihad originally intended for these weapons to go to his 12 trusted companions, the 10 family heads, V, and Arlen. And it's crazy because it makes perfect sense. We know he had, there was Jihad and his 12 companions, right? And there's 13 weapons. It works out perfectly. But what ended up happening was the thing with V happened and there was that giant, we don't really know what happened, but there was a disagreement. Something went down, right? And he decided, nope, I'm actually not gonna let this happen. So he did not give them to the family heads. So instead, Gustang came to Jihad. We have a whole video about Povidel Gustang. You can check that out by clicking the card. Gustang came to Jihad and was like, hey, why don't we introduce a princess system, a Jihad princess system where these princesses have to fight it out and duke it out with each other essentially to collect all of the 13 months and we'll have it so that if you collect all 13 you can become Jihad's wife which is still gross <laughs> he's injecting them with his blood so that they can become his daughters and then marrying them it's messed up but that is the idea that they'd collect all 13 and then essentially gain the right to become Jihad's wife or bear his children or whatever but what's really fascinating is that when this first started, this system was absolutely brutal. The princesses were, were killing each other and it was wild. And eventually, you know, now we're to where we are now, it's a lot more docile. You know, the princesses don't necessarily all hate each other. Some of them do, like Yuri and Mashini, right? It's a little bit contentious, but they're not like slaughtering each other like crazy like they did at first. But what's also fascinating is that Jihad does not actually want them, according to Garam, he does not want them to be collected. He really did this, according to Garam, just to distract them, essentially, right? He actually doesn't even want a wife, and more importantly, he doesn't want this key to be created. So he's really just doing it so that these weapons don't end up in the wrong hands. They're still with people who deserve them, quote unquote, but they're not getting out of his grasp, essentially. They're still within the Jihad Empire. They're still being put to use, right? But he's not he, he doesn't want them to be all collected, so he apparently will do whatever it takes to stop that from happening. And we can see that with the ghost of the 13 months. There was this girl who failed the initial princess process and she despised all the other princesses around her. She, she developed this like deep-sated hatred with them. And so she came to Jihad and was like, hey, I don't like these people, let's make a deal. And essentially, she somehow made this deal where she was able to seep into the spirit of the 13 months and this is Jihad was okay with this again because he doesn't want them all to be collected so what's really fascinating is if you ignite two weapons simultaneously this ghost will possess you and this ghost will torment you and basically just control you and we see this with Yuri. She tries to ignite both the Black March and the Green April, and she gets possessed. Obviously, she ends up being okay, but a lot of other princesses were not that lucky. Apparently, at least five of them were killed in this way, uh, which is crazy, you know? And this is just one way that Jihad is like, hey, you know what? It's stopping, it's stopping the princesses from gathering them all. 
it's wild. It's wild. Jihad is doing whatever it takes to make sure that this does not happen. T to make it even worse, actually, these princesses weren't even killed because they went on a rampage and died. They were killed because Jihad's like, hey, if you go crazy, we're going to execute you. So literally, Jihad made this... Jihad's a piece of garbage, bro. Jihad made this deal and was like, if you go on a rampage, we're going to kill you when he is the reason they're going on that... Bro. Can, can we just, can we kill Jihad already, please? Thank you. So yeah, essentially once a princess becomes a ranker, she becomes qualified to potentially receive a 13 month series weapon. She becomes a chosen princess or whatever translation it is, basically proves her ability and she's able to potentially receive one. What's fascinating is you can actually refuse one. And this is actually gonna get into some rules here. So apparently there are three main rules that bind you once you become a princess. The first one is that you cannot lend your weapon to anybody else. You can't give it to somebody. It's, it's forbidden, especially if they're not a princess, right? So if you remember back in season one, when Yuri tries to give, well, she gives the Black March to Bomb, lends it to him, Evan starts freaking out and says, you're gonna be, if they find out, you're gonna be executed, right? And obviously he didn't, couldn't care. He's not gonna snitch on her or whatever, but that's, there you go. That is a rule. You can't give it to somebody else. This makes a lot of sense. It, it is interesting though, because even if you do, they won't be able to ignite it or use it properly, but still, well, actually that's not necessarily true. Now that I think about it, that's just a theory. We'll get into that in a second. The second rule is that you are allowed to own multiple. So Yuri has two, Garam has two, other princesses in the past have had two at least. So that's interesting. And yeah, the third rule is that you can actually refuse a 13 month weapon if they offer it to you. Uh, Heis Jihad, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Heisi, Heise, we've never met her before, but she refused it. Props to you, girl. We don't know why she did, but she was like, I ain't, <laughs> I ain't getting in this business. So I respect it. So yeah, we do know that even though it is a theory, a rumor essentially, and people believe, oh, you have to be one of the, the princesses to activate or ignite the weapon. That's not necessarily true. You don't have to be a formal or chosen princess to activate it. Anak is not a formal princess. She has the blood of Jihad. So you could argue that's why she's able to ignite the green April. Obviously, she's not able to use it to its full potential, but still. But so is Bomb, right? Bomb ignites the Black March in season one. And he's obviously able to use it again during the last station and all that stuff that goes down. He doesn't have the blood of Jihad. As far as we know, it seems pretty obvious as far as we are now. And he's able to ignite it. So that does not seem to be a problem. That does not seem to be a thing. That must just be some kind of rumor that's been going on in the tower. Not all of the weapons are the same. They're not all needles. They're not all hooks. They can change. We're going to get into that once we break down each individual one briefly, but they're all different, which I actually think is really cool. They're not all like a set of the exact same thing. They're all very unique and all have different sets of skills and powers, which is actually super cool. Now, despite the fact that a knock and bomb were able to ignite the weapon, no one can just ignite it out of force. The weapon has to allow you to ignite it. So obviously a knock tried to ignite the Black March in season one. She wouldn't let her, right? She wouldn't let Chibisu either. So it wasn't a problem of being a guy, right? She had to like the person. She obviously likes Bomb and she let him use her. She wouldn't even let Yuri do it, her proper owner. Yuri could not ignite the Black March, which is wild, right? However, the, the Green April did let a knock ignite the weapon, possibly because the Green April knew, hey, this is my master's daughter, I'll let it ride, whatever. You have to like essentially get its permission, basically. They have to let, because we have to remember the 13 months, they're ignition weapons. They have these souls inside of them, right? Kind of like how living ignition weapons, it, it's it's similar to like Kasuno and Horyong and them, but different. These are legit weapons that have a soul inside of them. They're not humans but they still have souls. Now, even though these weapons have all these powers and capabilities and they are extremely sacred, right? Some of the most treasured items in the entire tower, probably the most treasured items, right? Despite that, that doesn't necessarily mean that all of them are the most powerful weapons in the tower. They are some of the most powerful weapons, but there are other weapons that could be more powerful than at least some of them. So we know that the Black March is a B rank, uh, weapon that could, you know, that rank could go up once ignited. Same for Green April, I believe. So they're really strong. You know, we know the Golden November is the as an S rank item, so that thing is insane. But they're still, like, despite the fact that they're not necessarily the most powerful weapons, period, they are still very treasured and still powerful. Like, 
extremely. So keep that in mind. That is most of the lore that we know about the 13 months as a whole. There is more. I recommend checking out the wiki page for the 13 months series weapons. There's a ton of information on there. It's interesting how the engravings on the weapons are in Japanese. You know, SIU state has stated that there's not like some secret significance behind this because he uses a lot of languages in Tower of God. But still, that's kind of cool. There's something about that. But there's tons of other info on that. But now we're going to break down the weapons individually, see what they're all about, who owns each one, and yeah, just break them down. So first we have the Silver January, which is currently owned by Anne Jahad. We don't know much about who Anne Jahad is, where her whereabouts are, who really what family she's from or anything, but it is being owned by Anne Jahad. That's all we know. The White February was owned by Eurasia and Jihad, but once she was sealed, Jihad took the weapon and he currently has it, or the Empire has it. No one, as far as we know, no princess has been given this weapon since Eurasia N was sealed. Also, Eurasia N didn't originally own it. She killed a princess who had this weapon, and then once she was sealed, Jihad took the weapon. Then we have the Black March, if we're going in order of the month. So the Black March, we know about the Black March. This thing is very powerful. It is a needle, which is interesting. So needles are not swords. Needles are much more thin, and they're able to slice through Shinsu easier. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean they're better than swords, but for most people in the tower, it is, because swords become heavier and harder to use as you climb the tower, unless you're really skilled, like from the REA family. So the Black March, extremely powerful item. Once it was ignited, it was able to pop the ball in Heden's test, a test meant for irregulars mostly, right? So that definitely says something. Uh, we haven't really seen the weapon itself at its full potential, but when Bomb merged with the Black March during the last station, bro, Bomb kind of got overpowered. So overpowered, in fact, that Evan Kell, when she started training Bomb, was like, hey, stop using it. You're relying too much on this power. It's too busted. Calm down. And Bomb has not used it in season three yet. So I'm curious what the Black March is going to do in the future. As far as its personality, we know that she likes Bomb because she finds him cute, but she also finds him interesting. So, you know, aside from that, her personality is kind of a mystery. But yeah, that's the Black March. Oh, also, she's technically owned currently by Yuri, but technically, technically bomb. So there's that. And then we have the green April, which is not a needle and it's not a sword. It's actually a hook, which is a weapon used by some fishermen. And we know what this thing is capable of. Anak Jihad was able to ignite it and use it, but not to its full potential. And yet she was, bro, Anak using the green April was overpowered. This thing was crazy. During the crown game, she surprised Kuhn. She surprised Laro. She surprised everybody. If a knock had stayed on that chair and not moved, she could have won the crown game hands down, right? She was unstoppable, okay? So this weapon is crazy strong. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean it's the most powerful. <laughs> you know, it's a apparently a B rank weapon currently. When it's ignited, maybe an A rank. But we know that Yuri has used it before. She's gotten a lot more comfortable with it. It's currently owned by Yuri, of course. That said, this thing is crazy strong. It's able to extend and grow in size, and it's able to like split off into multiple, like, you know, it's, it's crazy. This thing can like expand and grow. Apparently it can even become a forest. Like that's how much this thing can expand, which is crazy. As far as the spirit inside of it, we did get to see the elf girl that was sort of the, the soul inside of this weapon. And she does seem to like fighting. She's a bit more sad, uh, sadistic, I guess you could say, in comparison to the Black March, but we don't know too much yet. I'm curious if we're gonna get more on her. But regardless, that is the Green April. The Yellow May is currently owned by Kun Mashani. This is Mashani's weapon. We have not seen it yet, but you know, the nest is amping up. I'm wondering if Kun Mashani is gonna bust this thing out. We don't know what type of weapon it is, but yeah, this is Mashani's 13 month. The Luminous June is actually a sword, which is really interesting. There's only one other 13 month that is a sword, and it is currently owned by Alfid Jihad, who is actually missing. She's missing. We don't know where she went, what happened to her. Is she dead? Not, we don't know. But it is interesting that this thing is actually a sword. And then we have the Indigo July, which is currently owned by Garam after she killed her twin sister, Yuram. And Yuram currently, you know, she previously owned that weapon. When Garam was forced to kill her, then Garam took the weapon. Indigo July, that's all we know. And then we have the Blue August, which is my personal favorite because 
I'm an August boy. I'm just kidding. Uh, the Blue August is owned by Garam, who, again, we don't know what type of weapon it is, but we do know this was, this was the original weapon. Like, this was the weapon bestowed to Garam when she became a chosen princess. So she currently has Blue August and Indigo July. She got Indigo July from killing her sister, and then this is the one that she's had all along. The more I'm studying, like, the, the more I'm, like, talking about these and, like, looking at all this information, the more I'm, like, we really don't know much about the individual weapons, but it's still really interesting to talk about. And then we have the Dark September, which is a kind of ominous name in a way. What's really interesting is we don't know anything about this weapon. This is the only one that we know nothing about. We don't know what princess owned it in the past, if a princess owns it now. It's, we don't know anything about Dark September. This guy, this is the dark horse, if you will, of the 13 months. I'm curious what this thing is gonna do in the future. And then we have the Red October, which is the other sword. So I mentioned that the Luminous June was a sword. So the Red October is the other sword. There's only two swords in the 13 month series. Again, not needles, right? Swords. And this weapon, the Red October, is currently owned by Arie. I always struggle with this name. Arie Hagefurion. Arie Hagefurion. Hagefurion. Arie Hagefurion Jihad. So this makes a lot of sense, you know. Uh, Hagefurion. <laughs> that's a name, is from the Arie family. So it makes sense that she got a sword. She's able to use it to its fullest potential, probably being from the Arie family. Now, what's fascinating about Arie Hage Hagatherion Jihad is that it's speculated that she's the one who actually took down White. Not only has Hagatherion passed Arie Han's test, she's the only other one aside from Yurik who's passed that test, but... There is a translation that exists that has that states that a princess from White's family is the one who took him down, right? And stopped him from doing everything that he was doing. In our current translation, that's not what it says, but it is interesting and I think actually very possible that she was the one. And then we have the Golden November. Now, this thing may just seem like, okay, the next one, right? This weapon is owned by Adori Jihad. Yeah, Adori Jihad. Jihad's supreme leader, his main general, like his top soldier, right? His top princess, Adori Jihad, owns the Golden November, and this thing is an S rank weapon. November. Who would have thought? Being an S rank weapon, this thing is the most powerful of the 13 months, apparently, being that it's an S rank weapon. It doesn't mean it's the strongest weapon in the tower. For example, Arie Han has the White Ore, which is an S plus rank weapon, and that's a sword. Can only imagine what that thing's capable of. But still, the Golden November, the strongest of the 13 months. And then we have the Colorless December, which was Eurasia N's weapon, the one that was given to her. This has currently been sealed away with Eurasia N, so whenever she's unsealed, if she ever is, I'm assuming she will have this weapon with her. Now, this is interesting because it's unknown if this is the thing that drove her insane or what's going on there. But regardless, they, they took the other weapon that she had but they kept this one with her. What was the other weapon? Hold on, shoot, I'm looking so bad. The White February. So they took the White February. You know, Jihad has that one. He's waiting to give it out again, I'm sure. But they sealed the Colorless December with Eurasia N. So pretty interesting stuff there. We don't know what type of weapon it is, but there you go. And then finally, we have the Rainbow Undecember. And I am saying that right. It's not the Undecember, it's the Undecember. Because apparently that's the month that it, the next month would be called that apparently in the calendar system so this is actually probably the most curious of the 13 months even considering the golden november and all them because this is not a weapon this is actually an inventory we don't know what kind of inventory it is whether it's an arms inventory armor inventory real inventory but it's some type of inventory so I don't know what it's going to look like, but it's probably some crazy busted inventory, which is kind of cool. Uh, we don't know who has it or where it is or what's going on there. But yeah, this is actually kind of one I'm most curious about because it's not a weapon. I think it's actually super cool. But guys, that is all that we know about the 13 months or most of the stuff that we know. Again, check out the wiki page because there's a ton of details. I mean, I'm so surprised we know this much, honestly, about the 13 months, considering we've only seen two of them. That's absolutely busted and, and crazy. It's crazy. 
Uh, regardless, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like. Also, this was a Patreon request, actually, from one of our sponsors, one of our Kings of the Tower $50 patrons, Syed Masood. I'm so sorry if I said your name wrong. Syed Masood, thank you so much for your support. And this is a fantastic idea. I already wanted to do something similar. So when they came and requested this, I was like, okay, I, I have to do this one for sure. So a huge thank you to Syed Masood for that suggestion. But yeah, again, guys, if you liked the video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for that daily content. We're on that grind. I'm sorry if I'm not going to do much editing for this video. This is actually a really long one, and I have to get it out soon. I'm going to be busy tomorrow. That's why I'm filming it tonight. But regardless, I, did, I do hope you enjoyed. Uh, but yeah, thanks a lot, guys, for watching. I'll see you in my next Tower of God lore video. Take care.